Heading into today's debt ceiling crisis meeting, President Biden is facing major headwinds. With the latest Washington Post ABC News poll this week showing him at a low 36 percent approval rating overall, down from 42 percent in February, the lowest poll numbers for any president seeking a second term. And in addition to the looming debt ceiling deadline, he faces a pending crisis at the southern border this week, with Thursday's lifting of the COVID restrictions on migrants known as Title 42. Recent 2024 polling has President Biden trailing or tied in a head-to-head -head rematch with former President Trump. Joining me now, Foto Latino President and CEO Maria Teresa Comar, Wall Street Journal White House reporter Sabrina Siddiqui, and Charlie Sykes, the Bulwark Editor-in-Chief. Welcome all. So, Maria, you know, you, Maria Teresa, the, the Title 42 border restriction, it's sort of a lose-lose proposition for any chief executive. And they've been bracing for this. But the criticism from the ACLU, I talked to Lee Gillard, you know, just yesterday, is that they didn't prepare properly. They didn't create regional centers. They didn't get more judges and social workers down there. And there's a lot of resentment from social and NGOs, you know, about sending 1,500 active duty troops. Well, and the message it sends, right, and absolutely right, we knew that Title 42 was basically going to sunset two years ago. And there seems to be, they seem to be caught in their back footing. And the message of militarizing the border more really plays into that the people that are coming across the border trying to seek asylum are some sort of criminals. So it doesn't help. I mean, what we saw just most recently this weekend, where someone took it upon themselves to take their car and kill seven innocent migrants because of the rhetoric and the that has consequences. And so I think right now the administration needs to have a conversation with the American people of what's really happening at the border and how how, if we are, don't create humane conditions, sadly, we think that this could be much worse than it already is. We were just talking, Sabrina, about how just today Speaker McCarthy is seizing on the border issue and throwing it into the debt ceiling conversation to sort of amplify the president's vulnerabilities right now, just in the last couple of days. Well, there's no question that Republicans are looking to seize on this expected surge at the border uh, in a bid to uh, frame it as a major liability for President Biden. And look, I think that President Biden is in a really difficult position when it comes to Title 42 and its end, because for a long time, he's actually facing a criticism from immigration advocates for keeping it in place, because many of them pointed out that this Trump-era policy was not actually about the public health emergency around COVID-19, but just another Trump-era policy designed to limit immigration and asylum seekers. And in lifting it, the Biden administration has actually proposed some new rules that would also restrict the number of asylum seekers coming here to the U.S. So there are no good answers on this issue. We know that it remain, Congress remains at a deadlock when it comes to immigration. I will say it's very early in the course of the election cycle, so it's really hard to say if this will be an issue uh, going into the 2024 election season. Polling shows that it's a top issue for Republican primary voters. That's why you're hearing a lot from Republicans about immigration and the border. It's not as salient when it comes to the general electorate, and we'll see if anything changes as we uh, witness the aftermath of lifting Title 42. Right. This, this could be a shorter-term problem, but it, it is true that he's being criticized by both sides, so he, he can't seem to win on this issue. Charlie, the election is more than a year away, but in a hypothetical matchup, yeah. look at these numbers. 44 percent of voting-age adults say that they would definitely or probably vote for Donald Trump, and 38 percent would likely vote for, you know, Joe Biden. Uh, if DeSantis is, in, is the nominee, he's at 42 percent, while President Biden is at 37 percent, 21 percent undecided. So this is just one poll, but how troubling should this be for the White House, which has been eager for Donald Trump to be the nominee? Well, I mean, a couple of things. I mean, of course, it is early. That poll might be an outlier. Um, right. But it is an indication that uh, they should not in, in engage in uh, too much complacency about all of this. You know, all of these challenges that, that you're mentioning are real and they're not going to go away. Now, I personally think that in 20, by, you know, by the time the 2024 general election campaign rolls around, this election will be a referendum on Donald Trump. But Joe Biden can't count on this. Some of this is um, something that the Biden administration can can fix. Some of it is basically the mood of the country. I mean, Americans are just in a bad mood. We have this uh, massive, I, I think, uh, hangover slash malaise from the pandemic. And, and I think that Joe Biden is paying a price for it. And also, the fact is that 
um, his critics have uh, been able successfully to make the narrative about his mental acuity. And, and I think that uh, the, the White House needs to lean into that. I, I, I think he needs to be more of a presence. I think he needs to use the bully pulpit more. Um, but there are some things that are going to be difficult to fix, including the fact that even with a growing economy, Americans are just in a bad mood. And that's never good news for an incumbent. Yeah, I'm not acknowledging, not acknowledging rather that the economy is in fairly good shape, all things considered, but it sure won't be if this debt ceiling crisis continues and if even after this first meeting it falls apart badly in what they say outside afterwards. You know, markets react. Um, Charlie, I also want to ask you about something that Liz Cheney has done. She's launched her first TV ad in New Hampshire against Donald Trump. Take a look. He refused for three hours to tell the mob to leave. There has never been a greater dereliction of duty by any president. Trump was warned repeatedly that his plans for January 6th were illegal. He didn't care. And today, he celebrates those who attacked our capital. Donald Trump has proven he is unfit for office. Donald Trump is a risk America can never take again. Charlie, is that effective? Well, good for her. Um, it needs to be said, um, and Liz Cheney says it as effectively as anyone. I don't know what she is uh, planning on doing, whether she's running or whether or not she is just simply firing a shot across the bow to soften him up. But um, as we get into this campaign, this is part of the dialogue that needs to take place, and it needs to take place um, within the Republican primary. So, um, uh, you know, good on uh, Liz Cheney for, for raising it, if nobody else will. Maria Teresa Kumar and Sabrina Siddiqui, thank you so much, and Charlie Sykes.